You're listening to Red Revolution Rampage. And guess what, folks? Hockey is back. Yeah. And, well, it's Soon not enough. back yet. Yet. Right. <laughs> oh, but in less than in about, well, yeah, about less than two weeks, we will have the first six division games, which will start uh, on Tuesday, the 28th. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 28th, 29th, and 30th. Everyone's going to get one exhibition game. 2014 is about by two, 12 games. Um, and all these games are really interesting because they're all pretty much rivalry exhibition games. I don't know why, but right off the bat, we're starting off with exciting games. Right. I, I don't get it. Like During the preseason, we always get Washington. Now in the playoffs, as an exhibition game, we get Washington. Why the, the pre postseason games? Um, <laughs> so yeah, break down for me and anyone else who's not understanding what is happening with the playoffs. So they're doing an exp, exp that word game, <laughs> and then then see words are hard not only right. for Omar but for everybody. Ex- exhibition. <laughs> exhibition. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> uh, okay they're doing that and then they're doing like six games per day i mean how is it how is it working out as far as like you know it's well, the exhibition practice. games are, are, are it's gonna happen a couple days actually a week before the rest of the, the season plays out you're talking about july 28th to the July 30th, right? And then everyone's going to get July 31st off before kicking off the actual Stanley Cup qualifiers right. the next day. So Tuesday will have three games. Wednesday will have six games. Thursday will have three games. So okay, let's okay, let's, let's take it day by day, right? So Tuesday will be Penguins and Flyers right at, off the bat at 4 p.m. Like, that's a crazy matchup. Battle for Pennsylvania. And then you have uh, at eight o'clock. So I guess they're they're giving them about four hours between that game and the next game. Some games won't have that much time, and uh, we'll talk about. Let me talk about Wednesday here in a bit. But um, yeah, so four hours later, you'll have at eight p.m. These are all Eastern time uh, starts, right? So eight p.m. you'll have the Leafs and Canadians, and then at ten thirty which is ideal for West Coast games or West Coast team games, uh, it will be the Oilers and the Flames for the Battle of Alberta. That's, that's just day one. Right. Uh, but then <laughs> oh, look at, man. Look at they- Wednesday. You'll have 12 p.m. game, 2.30, 4 o'clock, 6.30, 8 o'clock, 10.30. Two and a half hours between games. So I'm guessing they're trying to... I bet you... For most of these games, the refs are going to swallow the whistles and be told to push the game forward. Um, I, and since you're only getting that one game for the week, they're going to be asked to, to move the game faster. It'll be interesting to see how things go, like who gets the start. Or I mean, there's a lot to ask, right? Do you start the goalie who's going to start the next week or do you give him some more time and you start a different guy? Um, how much of the actual roster are you going to put out there and risk getting injured? Because again, right. refs are going to swallow the whistles and they're going to push this game forward because they're really only given two and a half hours to play this game. And they are alternating for the most part uh, between uh, Toronto games and Edmonton games with the exception of the Penguins, Flyers, and back-to-back with the Leafs. Canadians, but that's a there's a four hour gap between those games. But for the games that are it's only um so yeah, I guess they're given four hour gaps between games at the same arena if you look at the rest of the schedule, because there's three games gonna be played in Toronto and three games gonna be played in Edmonton on the 29th, Wednesday, right? Including the Canes and Capitals. And and between all those games is four hours. It's an exact four hour time difference between the games. Right. Now, so these are just what, like preseason, just for fun type of games. Well, the, the idea is to give these guys some sort of ice time before jumping into the playoffs right away. Is will it be enough? I don't know. 
I mean, more more or less, Amanda, you're right. It, it's kind of like the last preseason game. Mm-hmm. Except, you but know, in, in the usual the playoff pre- working is. I'm sorry, I keep cutting you off. I was saying, you're like, fine. In the usual, in the usual, you know, preseason, you have multiple games, at least three. Right. You get a lot of guys for ice time. But I'm I'm assuming you're asking how the rest of the the actual qualifiers are going to go. Yeah, because I mean, as compared, you know, we're all used to a bracket. You know, you have all the different teams. Like, how are they there? Doing? Really? No. Isn't at this point there isn't a bracket style. It's basically yeah. if you win your qualifier, you get in, and then from there the bracket gets sorted out. Because while the qualifiers teams are fighting it out, you have the round robin between teams one through four for seeding. Yeah, but they're only so, playing three games. Yeah. They're all playing each other once for teams one through four. So each team gets to play one game against the other teams. And then I'm not even sure. It's not even fully explained how the um, how the uh, what's the word I'm looking for um, seeding is going to go for that. But the idea is there is no more bracket this year. Um, say, for example, Montreal beats the penguins right they're going to be I the bottom let's just assume I'm, I'm taking montreal because they're the lowest seed right um as a lowest seed they won't be taking the penguins spot in the bracket right because in the bracket they would be they were not, they're not going to jump to the third seed they're still the 12th seed so instead like the hurricanes would move up in the seeding if they beat the rangers right um, so I say if Columbus beats Toronto and um, Montreal beats the Penguins, then Carolina becomes the fifth seed and they'll draw the fourth seed instead of in which at this point is the Flyers, right? And instead of drawing what would, what it normally would have been the Capitals, again, assuming that the seeding is remains as is. Um, on top of that, the the rest of the seeding isn't. It are not doing the two two and the the second and third playing each other from the division. Everything is just straight one through sixteen. Yeah, it, it just seemed sorry one through eight. Really confusing. And so, are they doing a, a three at best three out of five instead of five out of seven? For a round, for the play-in round, yeah. For the, or as they, they're calling it, the qualifying round. It's best out of five. And then they're going to return to what they're considering is the Stanley Cup playoffs. Everything back to normal for the most part. Mm-hmm. Which means advantage to any team that can get the clean sweep in the qualifying round. Because you played the exact same amount of games as the round robin teams. For the most part, yeah, but we're assuming that, but they're going to play them over the course of, like, say, if a team swoops another team, at most, from what I'm looking at, it will be a five day, uh, over the course of five days. However, the round robins from game one to game, the, the shortest, the team that has the shortest time uh, is the Capitals because they played a first game on August 3rd and their final game on August 8th. And and that's a six game, six day um, course, right? Um, the Hurricanes, and, uh, the Hurricanes, Rangers, Islanders, um, Panthers have back to backs, uh, and as what say, and same goes for Calgary, uh, Jets, uh, Predators, and and the uh, Coyotes. They all have back to back. So is that an advantage, disadvantage? Will we see guys who usually wouldn't get ice time get ice time, right? Because they're you carrying them. You, you they're carrying guys like Suzuki and and uh, Geeky and, and and who may not normally have a roster spot, but because everyone's healthy. Same with the defender, Jake Bean uh, is on the roster. How, how, how or is Rod Brindamore going to switch these guys in and out? Because he got back to backs, and if it, you know if. They need games four and five. You know, do you change things up? Say game one, 
didn't go as well. One of the guys, it's going to be interesting because there's going to be a lot of options for guys like Rod Brindamore that they wouldn't normally have during the playoffs. Hmm. Entirely true, but you got, let's look at this real quick. The Hurricanes at the end of the regular season, air quotes, uh, they were massively dealing with injuries. And now coming into the pseudo playoffs, they're healthy. They got Dougie Hamilton back. Sammy Botnin's able to go. The entire goaltender staff is ready to go. This is going to be a very interesting thing to see, especially with the exhibition game, to see how these guys are. Are they physically able to go? Are they back in form to Rob Brendamore standards? What's going to happen with those training days and that exhibition game? It's going to set the tone for everything. And I'm excited to see this. The defense for the Hurricanes on paper should be the best in the NHL. Right. You're now, carrying, will they perform that way? Well, you're carrying 10 guys into it. 10 guys are at the NHL level. 10 guys that all have an, at least one NHL game, uh, with the least being Jame, um, Jake Bean, right? The only thing is, only one who's, who's a question mark right now is Brett Pesci, right? And, and Don Waddell did say that they have to make a choice with Brett Pesci because... When it comes to Brett Pesci, uh, he's on the roster so much, but he's still healing, right? He's not ready, and he actually doesn't have a sort of ice time kind of uh, with contact sort of practice uh, expectancy until late August. And at that point, you're talking about the second round beginning. So do you even bother taking him with you It's to still Toronto? possible. But the question it's is, do you bother possible. putting him through everything, keeping him in the bubble for the first two rounds? Remember, this is just practice with contact. He might not even be ready until the conference finals, right? And at that point, he hit the chemistry he's been building with the guys. I mean, you might take him just to keep him practicing, but you're taking him away from family, friends, etc., putting him in, in the bubble and... He, for for we don't know like it could be a matter of him showing up and then turning right around and leaving because the Canes didn't make it through the first round or whatever uh so you know there's still decisions to be made there they still have the time to make that decision uh he uh has been going through the pro- protocols because they gotta start uh sort of looking for quarantining now to make it to Toronto uh, in time for the qualifying, uh, not the qualifying, but the exhibition games. Because you're looking at possibly all the way through uh, travel to the Hub City being on the 26th. So we're, we're, we're about a week into training camp. Everything's looking good. A lot of teams are have question marks when it comes to player health. And the question becomes, can, if, if, a team has too many people test positive or is, are, are deemed unfit for any medical reasons to travel to Toronto. What happens to that team? I know Hurricanes don't have that issue right now because everyone's showing up. They're, you know, they're passing their tests. There was, there was one small scare with Martin Nakis or Natchez in the, um, he he smoothly sailed through the next day and showed up for practice. So everything's looking green lights for the Hurricanes. But what about the other teams? That's a good question. Wasn't this the one that came on Twitter? Hey, it's a it's a good question. It showed up everywhere, right? So what happens? We don't know. And right now, we don't want to. The league doesn't want to find out. Uh, do they have a plan? Yeah. Sort of yes. The, the the policy, of course, is. You can't send those players, and if a team doesn't have enough players, and they no longer qualify for the playoffs, is that fair to the t- the city, the fan base, the the other teammates who were who did the right thing and didn't party and get themselves in, into um, wore their masks and didn't get themselves uh, in a in a place where they got infected? 
I don't know. But right now, I, I don't know either. I mean, the whole thing is, yeah, it's not fair, but if it has to happen, it has to happen. Just like around here in North Carolina, was it fair for spring sports to be canceled and ruin hundreds of athletes chances of getting scholarships and that kind of stuff uh, from their spring sports? No, it wasn't fair, but it ha- it had to happen. And now it might happen in the fall. And yes, there's going to be backlash. People are going to hate it. But ultimately, if it's the right decision and so far the canceling of spring sports turned out to be the right decision, now we'll see if the fall one will happen. It's going to be that decision of no matter what, people are going to hate it at the beginning. And then we're just going to have to wait and see to figure out if it was the right decision. (laughs) Well, we'll see how everything goes. Man, I I really want to... We can't just pretend everything's okay and then, you know, wish it all away. You know, we gotta... We gotta accept reality for what it is, what is happening, what isn't happening, and from there... Why can't this be Ready Player One? Why can't we just drift away into the Oasis? Because reality, and you gotta deal with reality. (laughs) I'm the still whole- on the team of I really think they should have just shut the season down and started over later. You know, I just, you know... Just well, that's what they did. Well, no, but they're still doing the playoffs. I mean, like, completely... Just end the season? Off. Well, the problem is if they do that, they're going to owe money to a bunch of different people because of contracts, right? You're Mostly NBC. Money- well, well, you got TV, you got, I mean, not just NBC, you got all the Sinclair Group, which owns Fox Sports, right? Um, oh, you're going to owe money back to, which, and they're going to, because they're going to owe money back to all the, all the, all the people who, the Santa Cup playoffs are, you know, they're, it's not the Super Bowl, but it, they still carry ads, right? Now, all that money for ad revenue is going to have to go back. A lot of things are going to have to happen. And then this was voted on, you know, it's not, it's not, maybe not the, the best decision, but it is the, Demo- it is a democratic decision done. So by the player, the teams, yes, hurricanes voted no, but they were outvoted. And this was the decision made by the NHL, NHL PA, and they came to an agreement. So <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the, it worked for other leagues that shut down right. their season. But you also look at the MLS, which is playing. Hmm. And the NBA, they're about to get started. And baseball, they're about to get started too. But all of them kind of sat and waited. And then when Europe started to play again, we can't, we, sorry, we can't compare ourselves to Europe. We cannot compare ourselves to Europe. No, right? no, Europe did the right thing from the bat. They no, set no, the they model can't. of how to come back, and but they have no. no fans. They kept their team in the bubble, and that's what they're. The but NHL we don't even have the mortar. We don't even have the mortar. Beat. We don't even have the mortar to build that model here in, in the U.S. because we screwed things up royally from the very beginning. You, from the deniers, the, the the ones who turned the pandemic political, from everyone who's now attacking masks to everything else, we don't have the will. And and the and, and the methodology that Europe had, and that's why they're enjoying sports to the limit. We can't. How are how are they enjoying sports though? You you, you watched if you watch NBC Sports, all of the Premier League still have no fans. Well, yeah, they're, they're still watching there. it. It's on TV. I mean, it, yeah, it, and that's the same thing that's about to happen with us. Is baseball's right. coming back? Basketball's coming back. MLS already okay, is okay, back. Okay, okay, okay. I might, you might want to pump the brakes on baseball and basketball because their plans were to do you know, of baseball. Their plans were to do it in their own arenas, right? In their own ballparks. God knows that that can happen. In some places, sure. As other places are, are completely fried, and they they probably shouldn't shouldn't do it. So where do you send those teams, right? And then the NBA. Was planning to do it in what is now the biggest hotspot of the virus on the planet, mm-hmm. and I, yeah, they're still going and, through as of right now. It's, as okay, of right now they're still doing. And it. this is and this is why I'm actually I'm glad you brought the NBA up because 
the you bringing up the NBA is kind of shows what the NHL did correctly. The NHL dragged its feet in, on naming hub cities for the longest time. At first, it was eight different cities or, or four different four different cities, one in it, one city for each conference, right? And then it became uh, two to three. Uh, and then they're like, Vegas is a shoe and absolutely going to happen. And then, you know, it, then Vegas spiked. And now less than a month before puck drop, basically, they're like, you know what? No, we're taking this whole, this whole show to Canada. And it's going to be Toronto and Edmonton. And even then, even then, it might kick back because uh, the storms in Edmonton did cause damage to Rogers place the other night. Mm-hmm. That was so sad. Yeah, I saw a video on Twitter. Like, it looked ugly. It flooding in the lower part of the arena. It didn't get down to, like, ice level, but it still looked bad. Yeah. Right. So, to say that we're going to get it, we're not sure. Until it actually happens... Until the puck is dropped, the, the basketball is lifted, the bait, the first pitch happens. Until then, we can't say we're getting it. And then you got to bring in football and how the heck they're going to do it. I, I, it was just, I loved, I, I just, football blows my mind sometimes. Like, I love football. I'm a Giants fan. You can stop booing. Um, uh, nah. <laughs> but. They're I'll they're banning the post game <laughs> like jersey swaps and handshakes and stuff after a full sixty minutes of full contact. Right, <laughs> it's just like life is full of hypocrisy. You got to deal with it. Okay, but it makes sense. It's not. I'm not even talking about hypocrisy. I'm talking about common sense. Well, right? That would, be, that would be more of a double standard. That was a that was a lot, bad word. Look, I, I, what I'm trying to, say is, trying to say is, the hand shell is like, here's the bubble, right? If you, you, and we're going to break the bubble into five groups, right? These five groups have have X, con, X amount of contact with these other groups. Group one is players, coaches, and immediate staff. Group two is officials and um, on-ice staff, right? Uh, yep. Group three is uh it's like, like hotel staff immediate hotel staff and then like the um any other the arena, like, trainer, staff. arena staff and then you have like anyone working vendors or anything any other vendors in the staffs like group five right and they limit how much each of these how much each of them can r- interact with each other and there's guidelines but if you're in group one you can go you're tested right you can go and then hug and and, and and shake hands with anyone else in group one. I don't think that hockey's fine tradition of the handshake line is going to go away. Maybe not. I mean, and they're wearing gloves anyway. They'll I mean, probably they, you take your gloves in the locker room. You take your gloves off for a handshake. I'm just saying. <sighs> oh, I mean, they got gloves. No, I know that they do that. I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, they've got gloves on, so leave the gloves on. <laughs> Wait, what if what if they actually didn't do the handshake line? Up? I, they just do a chess bump. It's like, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> a chess bump with the opposing team. That's uh, that'd be interesting. Chess Turn bump it, with Zodano Char. Oh God. Ducky, Ducky Hamilton turned it into a game of Duck Duck Goose. I mean, <laughs> why not? Thanks a lot, Brock Nelson. So, yeah, so there's a lot of things going on. I think what's interesting uh, is that we don't know what the matchups are going to look like past the ones we already have. And I think that brings a little element of excitement, right? Because now you have to be invested in every game. You have to be invested in the round robin. You have to be invested in the other games because the outcomes of every series and every round robin game plays into Matter. the, the it matters in the first in the first round. And what's interesting is that they're taking a full day off, which is August 10th, to do the rest of the basically to award the first pick of the draft to a loser. And 
and oh and reset no, the schedule. no 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 let's not get into that garbage shoot <laughs> let's not get oh into let's that. how let's, did that happen let's because that was how incredible did that happen oh, come on it's 2020 all right everything and anything is possible it's, it's literally the year <laughs> of um i feel so bad i just feel so bad for the detroit red wings that had to hurt <laughs> Oh my I mean, the big winner in all of that is still the Ottawa Senators because they have two top five picks. But, but I just feel so bad for the Detroit Red Wings to see that happen. I mean, it's your Murphy's Law, right? <laughs> Anything that can happen will. And it could happen that a team that's currently in the playoffs will be awarded the first round, the first pick of the draft, which is basically Alexei Lafreniere. And guess what? It did happen. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness! Just uh, <laughs> so I just, thing- I just can't imagine like Montreal getting the first overall pick on a fluke. It, it's it's. I, oh God! I, no, Montreal. Imagine a team like Toronto getting there. Oh yeah, because then the right? Hurricanes don't get that pick, and we don't have a first round pick. Correct. Yeah, because we for people who don't know, uh, the Hurricanes traded their first round pick to the Rangers for Shea. And the deal with the Leafs, where we acquired uh, Patrick Marlowe, we got a conditional first round pick from the Leafs, but it's draft protected. So if the Leafs are, what was it, top 10, we don't get it this right. year, and it's but we the get only, it next year. And the only way for them to fall into that top 10 is if uh, they win the first round pick. But here's the good news. The good news is... Then we'd get two picks for next year. Uh, so we might not get a pick this year, but we get two picks next year. It's not yeah, a great uh, deal. How about we just win the Stanley Cup this year? How about that? <laughs> yeah, one thing at a time. Uh, I mean, we, we got a pretty good setup team. So I think if we have to, you know, we have but to. But first, we have to get past our mortal enemies right now, the Rangers. Well, here's the thing we don't know the Rangers. You're like, what? You played them a billion times and we kept and losing. And we're not playing in Madison Square Garden. Okay, so here's here's the deal with the Rangers. The Carolina Hurricanes and the New York Rangers have never played each other in the Stanley Cup playoffs. As the Canes or the Whalers. Yes, correct. Wow. In Sad. franchise history. Wow. Right? Well, for a division rival, that's kind of hard to imagine, right? But they weren't always division rivals, so... We'll give them a pass well, on that. We also have to remember the Whalers for a long time were not very good. You have to make the playoffs first in order to play other teams in the playoffs. Yes. Technically. Playoffs? <laughs> we're talking about playoffs? Playoffs? We can't even win a game, let alone playoffs. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so there's that. There's a lot of things going on. I think what's interesting is, you know, with the schedule and stuff, we talked about. We talked about the schedule for the exhibition games. What about the schedule for like the actual game days? Right now, we only have the actual schedule for day one. Actually, we've got the, the times for... No, actually, we have the whole schedule yeah. for at least the first three games. Because right? the Hurricanes will play noon on Saturday, noon on Monday. I'm going to try to get off of work. And then 8 p.m. Tuesday. So it's man, not going to be have to true live back stream to back. from work. Oh man, Amanda, right? you and me are in trouble. Well, it depends on if that's my Monday to work or not. I have to look at my schedule. But, uh, but am I the only one who's going to get stuck at work having to listen to this? Man, I feel left out. Yeah. Oh, and so the games will be on Fox Sports Carolinas, right? Okay. Voiced by Mike not John Forsland. It's going to be Mike Maniscalco, and not John Forsland, because. The Hurricanes Unfortunately. Have, have not yet, and I want, uh, I'd i like the word yet to be true. Oh, I am off that Monday. Yay! <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> a, light, a light side to the story. <laughs> All right? 
But the Hurricanes have yet to re-sign John Fortson. I know. Okay. But here's the problem. They have they have re-signed everyone else, including including Abby Lavar. They have re-signed her and everyone else, Mike Miniscalco, uh, Trip Tracy. It's just him. Right. So here's here's the interesting tidbit. Please no Jason Shia. No, it's Mike, it's gonna be Mike Miniscalco. No, I'm saying like if John does leave oh. for next season. I think I know. So, so here's here's how it's gonna work. So, at least for the playoffs, right? Because John's going, he's working freelance for NBC NBC. Sports uh, for the duration. John, while gone, Mike's gonna step in for him. So it's gonna be Mike and Trip with you as usual, I guess. Um, And then Abby is going to move inside into Mike's spot with Shane Willis because. There's no need for in-host announce uh, in-host uh, in arena host. Words are hard, so <laughs> Abby's gonna s- but a- is gonna move over. Abby will kill it. Yeah, oh, no. Abby, oh, I've cool. got full full confidence in Abby, and she did sideline and- reporting for uh, ACC football games this year. She will. <laughs> no, no, Abby's one of the one of the best names in sports, and there's a lot of great women in sports, and Abby's one of them. Mm-hmm. The epic roommates of Abby Labar and Sarah Sivian. Oh God. <laughs> Anyways, we love both of y'all. Please, can you please both of you please come on the pod? That would be such a great episode. Sarah said not to ask her to come on any more pods anymore. Apparently, she says she thinks she's crazy, and <laughs> okay, yeah, you're, you're, you're not crazy, Sarah. <laughs> come on the pod. Yeah, uh, you'll have a blast. We'll have a we love crazy. That's how we love it. Yeah. So when we're looking at the schedule, remember when I talked about that four hour time difference between games in the same arena? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I've got a question. Yep. What if a game, say, let's take the first day, right? August 1st, Hurricanes and Rangers will play at noon. The Islanders and Florida are scheduled to play at four. And then uh, Montreal and Pittsburgh are scheduled to play at eight. So four hours, four hours, four hours between those three matchups. What if the Hurricanes and Rangers go into triple overtime? What if they pull checkers and go to six? Yeah. What happens to the next game? I mean... Are they doing, are they having space in between to kind of like k- disinfect the locker rooms and stuff? Remember, everyone's right in the bubble. Next. Everyone's in the bubble. Disinfect locker rooms, get the ice ready. But he, why, There's supposed to be a 90 minute pause. I wouldn't say dis- disinfect, just clean up. Remember, everyone's in the bubble. Everyone's tested. Everyone everyone involved should be coronavirus free. Should. Should be. Right. We don't know how good these tests are or how accurate they are. But everyone's getting tested multiple times. Hmm. And and any and any even if it's a false positive, it's treated seriously. So for the most part, no one really should have it. Everyone's gonna get tested so many times before that that puck drops the first time. But I mean the right that so when it comes to the exhibition games and the round robin, this is important. The round robin as well will will have regular season overtime rules, meaning five minutes of OT and then a shootout. Even the round robins. Interesting. So those games. So we just need to send in Justin Williams the whole time. Well, no, we're not playing any round robins, so. Hmm. Okay, I thought you were saying that that also applies to the no, 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 best of five. No, 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 just just the round robins and the exhibition games. The best of five uh, will have all other games will use overtime playoff rules, according to the NHL. In any case, anyone had that question? <laughs> so, what happens if games go into over triple overtime? It's gonna mess things up. It's gonna be interesting to see. Um, Let's hope not. That would be such a mess. 
But right now, well, only up until August 5th, I can't see anything for August 6th being scheduled. Everything up until August 5th ha- has a has a date. Yeah. Even Game 3 against Vancouver, Minnesota, which sneaks into August 6th, has yet to, is yet to be decided for a time. Sorry, not date, a time. From what I'm reading in front of me. So, right now, that's as far as they've planned. So, it's going to be interesting. I, I think they're going to want to look at and see what happens during the exhibition games. To try to and if hey, if you look at the exhibition games and they find that the time they allotted that four hours is not enough, they might space out games more and we might get a new schedule. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, I wouldn't either. We shall see, but there's some other than the Hurricanes versus the Rangers. I like seeing these matchups, like it's going to be very entertaining hockey, regardless. You got Pittsburgh, Montreal, the two teams. Pittsburgh was struggling down the stretch. Montreal was up and down all year. See if Carey Price gets another shot at the cup. Yeah. And then let's see. We got Islanders versus the Panthers. We got that a few years ago, and it was a fun matchup. Now we'll see it again. And let's see if the reverse happens. Ooh. We'll see. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot going on. I don't think. Here's the thing: we don't know. We certainly do not. We don't know, but we don't the, know. Player, the players seem to be upbeat. They're going to practice. Everybody seems to be uh, trying to at least keep a positive ab- attitude of. We're going to play. We're going to do our jobs. Yeah. I'm sure they're excited to get going. I think every team right now. That's what they do. Minus the seven teams that didn't make it are looking at the schedule and saying, you know what? Heck with the first pick of the draft. It's a good consolation prize, but you're in the end of the day, you're still one in eight chances of getting it. If you, if you lose. So might as well win and move forward. But at the same time, you're like, okay, I win the first play-in round, and then I lose the next one, or the one after that, and I get nothing. I get I don't even get a chance at the first round. I don't get a higher draft pick moving to the the next eight after the first seven. Actually, the next, you know, picks nine through 16, which are decent midway picks. But then you got teams that can't get that pick anyway, so you're like, well... They don't have. They don't own their own pick, so they might as yeah. well. I like Toronto, right? Toronto, it's either that first pick or that first round, Lafiniere, or nothing. It's win or go home, basically. Right. So they they're gonna play hard against Columbus. I don't know. There's there's a lot going on. It's an interesting story. Every in on August 10th, if everything else to plan, there we will have a buttload of stories from the NHL to discuss. And possibly a Toronto-Boston playoff matchup again. Yeah, I guess. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> Toronto's like, please, someone else. Please, please, please. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, oh, man. What do you think Steve would think about that? Steve Dangle would not be happy. Eh, no, no, the entire Toronto t- fan base would not be happy. Um... Mm-hmm. Look at, but let's talk about, let's shift gears a little bit because all the awards and the nominations for them have been coming out and uh, there are some interesting ones. Yeah, but no canes. I, which is which is an interesting concept because there should be. Right? And, and, uh, and there should be one specific Carolina Hurricane who has been royally snubbed on an award and that award is the Lady Bing um, award for the most gentlemanly player now usually it's given to the forward who takes the least penalties right right now the nominees are Nathan McKinnon Austin Matthews and Ryan O'Reilly now there was there's there has been extreme 
push back against Austin, Austin Matthews being a nominee mm, yeah. be- surrounding an incident where he... Yes, yes. If you're listening, that was sexual harassment, by the way. If you, it doesn't matter. If you, it doesn't matter the gender of the guard. And you, you show your, you literally show your ass to someone while they're right. freaking out in their car, locking it, and you're trying to get in there. I don't care how drunk you are. That's sexual harassment. This is not sexual, among assault, other things, sure. probably. Yeah, but it is definitely sexual harassment. And not to mention that per that person's security guard. That person is. Charged with oh that would never you stand safe. at PNC like they will they would whoop that guy's butt no matter what like they don't take crud from anybody. But let's just talk for a second that you that person's charged with protecting you. And that's how you treat them. Doesn't matter if that person was male, female, whether or not you want to consider it sexual harassment or not. That person is charged with keeping you safe. Is that a, is that the gentlemanly approach? To that person, how how is he on the ward? Yes, I get that the media is the one, the sports journalism, the the the, the hockey the hockey writers association is the one that puts these votes out, and there's a good yeah. chunk of them that come from Toronto, right? Because it just seems like Canadian press bias, in my point, because. Uh, I do not see how Austin Matthews makes it otherwise. All right. Meanwhile, you, you got Austin Matthews who's completed it. And here's the thing. When you talk to, you know, for the most part, reasonable j- journalists, all right? Well, I'll say reasonable. They got a lot of different ones. Like, you know, Chris Johnson, who said Slavin was number one in his ballot. Sarah Sivian, of course, uh, had Slavin. Mike Kelly uh, brings up a, an interesting Cool, uh, interesting statistic. He says that there was once a man who used his stick to separate opponents from the puck 169 times, second in the NHL, while taking only one tripping penalty. Can you even do that in like, and in, in like NHL 20, like the game? Can you? Like, uh, can you? Um, no, because I get like 20 tw- tripping penalties a day. You can't even do that in a video game. That man did it in real life. The man's name is Jacob Slavin. He did it this season. Second in the NHL for for separating an opponent from the puck. And only took Wait. one tripping penalty. One. I thought of one person who can do it. Rayla. Rayla could totally do that. Oh, you're so sad. All right. But anyways, and then you got to also note that Slavin gets top minutes, Right. Um, Greg Winsiski says he that Slavin got 1,600 minutes in the shutdown role and had a total of 10 penalty minutes. Since 1954, one defenseman has captured the Lady Bang, and that was Brian Campbell in 2012. It, hey, you got Austin Matthews in, so you got to have that. I, if I had to pick out of the three, I would say it's going to go to Nathan McKinnon, but... Well, it should go to Nathan McKinnon. Those are your three nominees. Because, but, but regardless, even Austin Matthews shouldn't even be on that platform. No, I mean, I mean, you look at Austin Matthews, and then also, um, and I love, um, Ryan O'Reilly. Oh, Riley! I'm sorry, I said O'Brien. Yeah, Ryan O'Reilly, great player. I think he's great. But this is also the dude who drove into a Tim Hortons drunk. <laughs> Oh my god, I forgot about that. Okay, I mean, I mean, literally, you can you can dig up in Jacob Slavin's entire so you won't find a single skeleton. No. Okay. Well, you might find one, but that would be an old Halloween decoration. <laughs> I don't think he even put skeletons up for Halloween. Like the man is that clean. <laughs> <laughs> like this is yeah. Jacob Slavin we're talking about. This guy. After He's still every game. considered one of the biggest underrated defensemen in the NHL right now. The NA, the NBC Sports people put up, uh, what was the top 10 defensemen in the league? And Dougie Hamilton was on there. He was high up. I think he was fourth. And Slaveman was ninth. Look, look, look. So 
let me let's talk about something. There, this lady being given for the most gentleman, right? And people are like, well, it's the most gentleman on the ice. Everything off the ice doesn't count. So whatever Austin Matthews did or we're driving into Tim Hortons doesn't count. Cool. This is nothing but it's still the dude who asked uh, another player to turn around so he could read his name because he didn't know who he was. Like, are you kidding me? Like, are you, is that gentlemanly? Is that is that an act of gentlemanly or even sportsmanship? It is. It could also be considered him trolling a new player. Or well, yeah, but that's like not gentlemanly. Trolling he... is not gentlemanly. It's literally the the definition of it. It's like gentlemen. What is the opposite? Troll. I mean, you think about that, and then you, and then and then there's Jacob Slavin who carries. He doesn't even carry an ounce of ego. I don't think he's ever cussed at someone on the ice, like that we know of. I don't think. I mean, like I said, you can go into a hundred hours of. Uh, of mic'd up and, and try to capture Jacob Slavin doing one thing bad. I don't think it exists. <laughs> I mean, every, I've I've been out behind the arena, you know, you know, talk to players, and yeah, Jacob with me Slavin's, half the time. Jacob Slavin's always the dude who stops, and oh and, and 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 his, he's got his truck and he drives slowly and he, I mean, if you need a Jacob Slavin arc autograph that's where you go because it's gonna happen yeah okay i get it Some unfortunately don't, now that's not gonna happen so but you, but you know what i'm talking about but you know what i'm talking about. yeah so how is he I and mean, come on everyone sees this everyone knows it happens he, he, the statistics say he should be nominated. The, the 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 eyeball test says he shouldn't be nominated the newspaper articles say or the lack thereof of newspaper headlines say he should be nominated. And you get Austin Matthews and Ryan O'Reilly. I, I, Braden Point has a better argument than those two. Honestly, yeah, it's going to go to Nathan McKinnon. Rightfully should. It's going to be Nathan McKinnon, but the fact that those two are somehow up there um, it's questionable at best. Yeah, I get it. Ryan O'Reilly just won the Stanley Cup with the Blues, and Austin Matthews plays for the Heathens in Toronto. Got it. Okay, I, I'm done because that's my rant, and that raised my blood pressure. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Steve would not be happy with that comment, Omar. It's a bat. It's a bat. fight me, Steve. Fight me. Right. <laughs> It's truly a value. Oh my goodness, but, but I'm with you. Yeah, and I feel like, uh, well, one, if Dougie Hamilton was a nominated for anything, Amanda would get a plane ticket to go to Vegas just to see him win. <laughs> I mean, if it wasn't for the injury in January against the Columbus Blue Jackets, Dougie Hamilton would have been a shoe in for the Norris. Oh, absolutely. He but, should next year if all goes goes well. He according to interviews, he's getting there. He's at eighty percent what he feels right. He's really also like a really humble dude, sort of. He's funny and he jokes and and he's true to himself. But I don't. I've never seen Dougie Hamilton pump himself up. Or actually, I don't think I've actually seen him like talk smack. I've seen him. Man. I've seen him dance, but that was just like the, that's the craziest thing he's ever done. Well, that's Martinuk's job is to hype everyone up. I mean, the, the freaking videos of him in the tunnel is hilarious every time. Mr. Svechnikov! Slavery! That could, I mean, yeah. I mean, he's, he's the second mascot after Stormy. I mean... Yeah, <laughs> Martinuk is a trick. Sorry, and then, Caroline. And then, yeah, yeah, and then, yeah, and then Caroline. demoted the third. <laughs> and then Caroline's Caroline. demoted. <laughs> and then Pucky the Whale. Oh, <laughs> I, I just think Caroline was a bad idea in the first place, but... <laughs> hey, Stormy needs loving, too. Yeah, oh, wait, Caroline wouldn't even be third. We gotta we gotta put Pucky at third. And then we gotta put our favorite pig mascot in fourth. And then Caroline. <laughs> Martin, <laughs> Martin's still number two, though, I'm just saying. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think even Hamilton might beat uh, uh, Pucky, though. <laughs> But we do well, have some good news. They fight out for that. We do have some good news. Um, 
I want to thank everyone uh, who's a Patreon. I don't have a full list in front of me. I could pull it up. But um, there's a lot of names. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna read them all by but I do want to thank everyone who's a Patreon. We raised seventy dollars for Black Girl Hockey Club. Whoop whoop. And uh, it's not much, right? It's it's humble, it's small, but it's honest and it's true. Um, that is the money. It. It's it's five dollar. Uh, They're five dollar stickers, stickers, right? So and that's um, a lot of stickers for seventy bucks. It is a lot of stickers for seventy bucks. It's Fourteen stickers. There are more stickers, right? Um, so and again, I've got I've got a huge roll of these stickers. Um, and again. Donations for these stickers will go continue to go to Black Girl Hockey Club. You can get them at uh, uh, patreon.com slash revolution R. Um, we are going to be rolling into our next month sticker for July. Um, it is going to be a Sebastian Ajo sticker. So stay tuned for that. We will have the picture of that on our website. And I'll have for those who are already monthly Patreons, I'll have those in the mailbox before the end. Uh, well, before Monday, and uh, I'll have them out in the mailbox bomb in Monday, sent out. Uh, so you'll get them in a couple of days. So those are yeah. going to be fun. Um, Omar showed me this like well before any of this happened, but <laughs> I just started laughing. It's a great I, sticker. I just started laughing because my birthday's in July, and I'm like, this is going to be the sticker of my birthday month. Really? You're going you're gonna to turn this into my sticker? Oh, and uh, and you, all new um, Patreons will get a holographic Revolution Rampage sticker, um, amongst some other stuff. There are, are other packages, include a t-shirt package for the, um, the Doug Hug t-shirt. If you want any of the old designs, um, let me know in the messaging Um we can come to a deal if you want, like three or four stickers at once. We can find a a, a price point. Again, all money from the uh, from the no room for racism hockey will go to the Black Girl Hockey Club. So there's a lot of stickers we're you know, and we do ship to Canada. So if you're listening in Canada right now, and going, hmm, can I get a sticker? Yes, you can. We do ship to Canada. Yes, you can. Yes, you can, my <laughs> dear. Uh, so. Tune in for that coming up soon. Like, there's there's gonna be hockey in a couple of weeks, hopefully, maybe if we they do it right, do it safe. It's okay to be conflicted between wanting hockey and wanting the players to be safe. There's nothing wrong with that. You don't have to beat yourself over the head for wanting hockey, even though it might put the players in danger, or you know, wanting to keep the players safe, even if it means not getting hockey. You don't have to. You can you can you can, you can want both. But so, I want it. Right? So you can want both. You can want both for the players to be safe and to get hockey. So I know a lot of people are like, what? <laughs> yes, yeah, true. So moving forward. I want we're, hockey we're, as long as the players can be safe. Yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. But we can get hockey stuff. Now that the yeah. eyes open. Again, but wear a mask, folks. Wear a mask. It's a piece of fabric. Wear a mask. If a surgeon can wear a mask for a gazillion hours while, you know, digging into your body to fix you and sweating because he's afraid he might break you, then you can wear a mask for 15 minutes as you get out of your car, walk into the store, buy your shit, and get back in your car. Wait, they're going to break us? Is this a game of operation? I think surgery is. Um, my god, does that mean my nose turns red? <laughs> I didn't know this could happen. You know, that's because you're asleep during surgery, you don't see it. Huh. Oh, oh that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh my god, why am I such an idiot? <laughs> All right, anyways, moving on. Why are you so freaking awkward, bud? <laughs> yeah, he'll be alright. Hey, be all right. I am Shorzy. <laughs> No, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I put you more. Uh, what's his name? The buddy, the the awkward guy. Come on, <laughs> what's his name? Ah, uh, crap! I Maybe. can't remember now. You guys have called me him for so long. Why do I not remember him? 
Oh my Everybody god. Is. We will be back with more episodes because hockey is back. Um God, it feels like forever since we recorded, because it probably was forever since we recorded. We'll try to move Well, we haven't so. met each other in like in person in what, almost two months now? Daryl. Daryl. Daryl's his name. <laughs> Daryl. <laughs> Mandel will come in like 30 minutes later and like throw a random piece of information and we're like, that's it. And we're like, hold up. That was like eight conversations ago. Let us rewind real fast and figure out what we'll you're talking the, about. We'll stop the recording, that's wait an ADD hour, and she'll just works. randomly text me, Daryl. <laughs> Daryl. All right, Daryl. Okay, I'm Daryl. I'm going to start driving NASCAR with a hockey stick. <sighs> NASCAR with a hockey stick. Lovely. So, so oh <laughs> NAS, like that's vehicle I, hockey on the ice, like, like Zamboni hockey to hit the gas pedal. Zamboni. Oh, you, you're not you're not sure as me, or okay? you don't need that. <laughs> I need the hockey stick to hit the gas pedal because my legs can't reach. Yeah. <laughs> Man, we can call up our Zamboni friend and just be like, hey. We got this. We got this idea for a new gas pedal. You want it? David Ayer says no. Um. <laughs> Man, I would love for that to happen. Is like David Ayer's like throughout the playoffs, he just shows pictures of him and his wife watching uh, Kane's games. He's wearing his game worn jersey the whole time. Like that'd be in case they call him in. Yeah, right. <laughs> live stream with them throughout the game we're like hey we need you talk about murphy's law i mean that would be insane if that thing happened again we we should just hire him to just stay in the raleigh area every hockey game like not even in the arena just in the area and we're like okay we need you come on i mean i'm at backyard bistro and enjoying a nice sandwich We'll, we'll give you another one (laughs) <laughs> all right so make sure you follow us on twitter instagram uh at revolution rampage twitter and red no yeah damn revolution hashtags R. are hard red, <laughs> at revolution r for instagram we need i just no i had a, it's the opposite at revolution rampage for instagram at revolution r for twitter i think i'm just gonna change the instagram once we have a single Hat, just single <laughs> app for everything. Yeah, yeah simplify my R life because we are all pirates. <laughs> all right, Daryl. Um, <laughs> I know exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> See, now I'm just plopping into the character. Now I'm just gonna keep going. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna go legally and change my name to Daryl now. Hold on. <laughs> While he does that. Make sure to check out our Patreon for news and greatest gear. Support us in what we do, and we'll, we'll continue bringing you the most awkward podcast in Carolina <laughs> Hurricanes history. <laughs> All right, Daryl's back. <laughs> What's up? Uh, no, we're just leaving. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I just got here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. This has been Red Rampage. We do love you all, and uh, stay safe. <laughs>